Check this out, guys. So this is Bear Island Campground in the uh, Big Cypress National Wildlife Preserve. And uh, man, this campground is empty. That is absolutely fabulous. This is a primitive campground. Uh, there is an outhouse right there. It looks like a pretty decent one. Um, there are fire pits, there are gear hooks, and picnic tables. But there's no electricity, no potable water. Now, it's going to be close to 90 degrees out here. And uh, while we're out here, I want to make sure I've got a little bit of shade. I also like privacy. So there's nobody here now, but if somebody comes in, I don't want to be, you know, sitting right next to them. So that one's got shade, and it's got no neighbors. But you would have the, uh, the road, but, I mean, there's not much traffic in here. That would be a good one. you got, you got some good shade, huge, huge campsite, and you're not going to have any neighbors Looks like the next camp is a little ways down. But this one caught my eye. This one actually has a little island of trees separating it from the road. And it's got, see it's set back a ways. Man, this thing is huge. Man, nice picnic table. Looks like the picnic table is a little bit warped on this one. That's all right. It don't matter. I'm not. I'm used to a hammock, so that don't matter to me. That'll work just fine. Nice fire pit. Got a nice gear rack. And there's the spot for the tent right there. We got palm trees when the sun comes up. Palm trees as the sun goes down. We'll get a little noon sun on the tent, but overall, that thing will keep nice and shady which is going to be the key. I need somewhere to sit in the shade when it's 90 degrees. And I'll put the gazebo facing the fire pit and sit in the screened gazebo and enjoy the fire. I think this is home because everything else is kind of out in the open. See down there, that one's kind of out in the open. I, I will, I could possibly have some neighbors here. However, they're separated by trees and they're, they're quite a ways off. So. That's, that it won't bother me a bit. All right, I think this is where we're, what we're going to call home for the next couple days. I'm going to start getting set up. All right, guys, so we are in camp, and I'm just getting everything set up. I, I got in a little bit late. I, I checked out a couple other campsites and uh, just wanted to make sure that I got everything set up before dark hits. Well, step one is done. There's a couple little minor details that have to be taken care of. I've got to get the fire uh, firewood ready. Get that fire pit set up to go but right now even if i didn't get a fire going the bed's ready to rock and roll and food's out cook stove's ready so step one is done now it's time for a step two step two tonight lagunitas indian pale ale so here's to you my friends Well, the sun finally moved off of the camp. It's getting later in the evening now, so it's kind of slowly heading off into the woods. So I moved out here by the fire pit. Still haven't got it set up yet, but uh, still working on the first step two. So as I mentioned, this is the Big Cypress National Preserve. Now in the National Preserve, camping is actually open here. You can camp anywhere, uh, however, Due to the fact that most of it is wetland, there really isn't very many spots to pull over if you're in a hammock or a tent. Now, if you're in a camper, you could pull over. Usually the, the roadsides are wide enough. There's a couple little pull-offs. So there are spot if, spots if you're in a camper that you can pull over. The reason you don't want to do it in a tent is because right now it is so dry out here. Uh, we haven't had rain in a long time. There's no real rain in the forecast for several days. Even if we get some, it won't do anything. And these gravel roads out here are just so dusty. When I opened up the back of the pickup tonight, it was everything was just covered in a half inch of dust. 
So if you were trying to sit out there and a car went by, you'd absolutely get engulfed in, in, in dust. In a camper, inside the camper, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even notice it. But I intend to sit around for two days and, uh, or I guess a day and a half, and relax a little bit. So I'll be out here for two nights. Um, the campsites are $10 a, uh, a night. I haven't quite figured out how to pay for them yet. There is a the first come first serve. There's a box up front, uh, but there was no slips for it. And I looked online and it said you're supposed to pay on site. So I'm going to hang out here until a warden comes or uh, or I'll go up and check it out later, see if they've restocked the uh, the, the uh, slips to pay, pay with it. But uh, I'm set up, so I'm here now. Tonight's going to be a fire, some dinner, just kind of relaxing, and then uh, I think tomorrow morning I'm going to head out. There's uh, quite a few canals around here along the roadside. A lot of, um, there's bass, largemouth bass, uh, there's gar, there's mayan cichlids, oscars, tilapia, there's uh, sunfish. Um, there's also, I, I, to my understanding, there's also peacock bass. Uh, occasionally in these uh, canals so I haven't caught one but supposedly they're here so I'm not gonna fish real hard tomorrow I got my um, my bow with I might try uh, try that might try to get a tilapia or something with that um, other than that man I'm just gonna relax and it is absolutely beautiful weather right now it's in the mid to upper 80s closing on 90s but the humidity has been pretty good so um, if I can stay in the shade I'll have no problems I'm going to work on this for a while and then get back to work. Hey, good morning, guys. Man, it is an absolutely beautiful morning. I slept great. I left the top out. Or left the top off last night. There was no rain. The wind died down. And it ended up being an absolutely beautiful night. Got to sit, lay and watch the stars and, and uh, woke up this morning, could hear the birds. Fabulous. Now I'm getting some coffee going. I'm going to have a little bit of breakfast and then uh, everything's covered in dew. And then, uh, I don't know, get a game plan for the day. I don't see any footprints on my stuff this morning, so I don't know that I had uh, any real active visitors last night. Last time I was uh, out, everything had footprints on it. The raccoons had been in, and, and I had thoroughly explored all of my gear. But so far today, it doesn't look like anything. I didn't hear anything last night, so I think it stayed pretty quiet around here. For coffee, I'm using a French, French press. I love this thing. I use this thing at home. It just goes in there. It makes really, really good coffee. It only makes, you know, probably two cups. But most of the time, that's about all I need anyway. And I can use that for tea as well in the evening. So I, I really like having that. I, Got it on Amazon, it was pretty cheap. Just put the coffee in it. Add the water. Set that on there and let it sit. When it's done, We'll just push it down. Voila! We've got ourselves some Java. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Banana, power bar, blackberries, Florida orange juice. And, of course, coffee. Most important. Yeah.
good way to start a day. Man, it is beautiful out. Not a cloud in the sky. Enjoy my cup of coffee and figure out what I'm going to do with the day. That's a little bit better. Up until now, they've been pretty daggone small. <laughs> Not a beast. Woo! Sharp little suckers. Not a beast by any means, but... Boy, the fins are sharp. There's a little culvert down here. They seem to like that. Ah! He was determined to go back. <laughs> the little tiny ones just tear at that worm. hope is they play with it enough to attract the big ones to it. A little stink. These guys right here. <laughs> that is a baby gar. See the little beak on him. Let me see if I can get in front of you. <laughs> I can see a bunch of them swimming around out here by the surface. A few inches long. They're pretty aggressive little things. They're aggressive when they get older, too. That and the baby sunfish. I should throw a couple of these in a bucket and use them later for, uh, for snook. I may do that yet. Oh, there's a nice one. <laughs> God, they are fun to catch. <laughs> little less colorful. He's got the tail spot. His uh, shoulder colors are a little thinner. Got my worm. Gotta go grab some worms. All right. The gear for this, super simplistic. I'm using power bait honey worms. They're little red worms. And just a super sharp, tiny hook. And just basic bobber setup. <laughs> I can 
see a couple nice ones up along the shoreline. I'm going to see if I can get into them. like the ones out in the sun aren't as eager to feed. That's why I'm working these little culverts because a lot of times they'll hide inside the culverts and then come out quick to grab something to eat. Sunfish. I haven't had any nice sunfish today. Um, the last time I was out here, I caught some really nice sized sunfish. But it's early in the day yet, so we'll see. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> There's what we're looking for. Look at that. What a beauty. Get him up. See if I can get control of him here. He's a beast. What a beaut. Look at the colors. Look at the colors on the fins. <laughs> God, they're slippery little things. Look at the tail. The tail fin. Isn't that pretty? They're beautiful fish. They are invasive here. And they are thick. But they're a great eating fish, beautiful fish, and man, they fight like crazy. So that's what we're after. I'm going to go throw this one in the cooler. All right, man. We uh, we did all right today. These are the Oscars. I caught I don't know maybe a couple dozen Oscars and sunfish. Check out the colors on that one. Just beautiful fish. Fight like crazy. Good eating. I actually had three. I already flayed one up. So I'm gonna clean these up. I'm doing it away from camp. That way I don't have any fish sent around to camp. I don't want to bring any panther or bears in. So cleaning them a ways away from camp, and then I'm going to head back and uh, start getting things ready for supper. I'm going to get to cleaning these, and we'll see you in a little bit. All right. Well, that was pretty fun. That was an excellent uh, day of fishing. I uh, kind of expected to go out for just a little bit, and then it would get too dang hot. And and come out and I probably should have based on the color of my arms <laughs> but that or it'll be all right cooled them down nicely so tan up we'll get my farmer's tan going they, I caught I don't know a couple dozen of those Oscars and I got into some Mayans uh, as I got further down they were all smaller nothing worth keeping but um, you know I kept I kept three nice Oscars and I saw a couple beasts, but you know, they get smart when they see you, you can't get them to bite. So uh, they get pretty wise. So now I'm back at camp and I'm gonna just uh, start getting things ready for dinner. I was trying to figure out a way that I could maybe do a smoke on those fish. So I'm gonna work on a little bit of a makeshift smoker here and uh, hopefully 
get something set up that I can use over the fire pit and do a, smoke a few of these fish. So I'll let you know if I get anywhere. <laughs> Well, it's getting later into the evening. The temperature's finally starting to ease back. It's probably down about 86, 85 maybe. So it's getting, uh, getting to be time with, to make supper. But I thought I might uh, pick up a few greens for supper. I brought some lentils for a base, but we need something to add to it. Let's see what we can find. I want to get away from the main camps. Let's take a look over here. There's lots of Bidens here, but it's all flowered. The wild coffee's flowering. No fruit on that yet. There's some green briar vines, but that's all old stuff. Nothing new. Needs rain. There's flea bane. Whether or not the leaves of that are edible seem debatable. I don't eat them. However, there is some young Biden's Elba that hasn't flowered, and there is some Pennywort. Not seeing a lot of that in here. It'd be nice to find a, a little bit more. There's some Gouda Cola mixed in. Let me go check over here by the woods, see what we can find. These campsites in here are huge. You can see this is all one campsite. Big fire pit, a couple palm trees for shade. They've got a gear hook here, double gear hook. Hang your stuff up, which is kind of nice. Here's some more pennywort. If I can find some young Bidens in here. There's more pennywort. Lots of Caesar weed, of course, seems to be ever present. More pennywort. There's an unflowered Bidens. A couple of them here. That would probably suffice for what I need. Ah, here's some young Bidens here. I think I can get the pennywort from that one spot and then get some Bidens out of this and we'll be good to go. Little greens for the supper. I'm only taking the top newest leaves. You don't really have to. Those are just the best. Especially when you want to look for plants that have not flowered yet. A lot of these have. This time of year with no rain, <laughs> the options aren't exactly diverse. Not for my knowledge, anyway. I don't see any Smilex, which I was hoping for. <laughs> well, there's something interesting. 
That's a papaya tree. I bet you somebody was eating a papaya, chucked it out there, and there she grows. <laughs> I'll be darned. Well, come back here later for papaya. Homemade seasoning. Moisture in it. Ooh, that smells good. Palm bronze, dry, they just go like gasoline, love it. Rub it all over it. Get it on the inside, outside. All over. Especially on the inside. Alright, today's harvest, or at least part of it. I kept one in the cooler plus the fillets. Maybe I'll have those for breakfast. I've got some eggs and potato. All seasoned up and sucking smoke. We'll let them sit and cook for a while. Hmm. Oh man. That is excellent. I'll tell you what, there is nothing better than fresh cooked, fresh caught fish cooked on an open fire. Now I sprinkled some of my homemade seasoning on that and I added it to the lentils and wild forage greens and the smell in the camp was just absolutely fabulous. Um, the fish won't pick up a whole lot of that flavor because it's just kind of rubbed on the outside and a little bit on the inside. But really the, um, you know, the smoke, that's the flavoring. Um, that you're looking for and I don't know you just really can't let it sit on there too long Because uh, I mean it'll start to dry out a little bit but Then you have smoked fish so oh, it's Just absolutely wonderful There's just nothing better catching yourself cleaning it cooking it and let me tell you, this was an easy clean. I mean, I, I didn't do anything fancy. Basically, I took the guts out, took the head off. I did scale them. Because these do have scales. And bones. But um, other than that, nothing fancy. I got the tent ready for the night. The um, clouds are kind of moving in. There's about a 40% chance of rain tonight. Which, for me, as a non-gambler means it's like an 80% chance because if I uh, if there's a 40% chance I'm gonna win at gambling that means there's an 80% chance I'm not so 
I'm going to assume that it is going to rain on me tonight. So I've kind of hunkered down the tent, got the flaps out, and uh, I'm going to kind of put everything away. I'm going to eat this. If I have enough time, enough light, I'm going to go fish for a little bit more tonight before it, it before it gets dark. It's, it's The temperature is fabulous now. It's probably about 81, 80 maybe, but there's a breeze, no humidity, so it's, it's really nice. So I'm going to work on dinner first, then we'll see what happens. Salute. Good morning. How are we doing this morning? And it's an absolutely beautiful morning. It's about 65 degrees. The sun's coming up. The birds are singing. Fresh coffee. Life is good. I slept like an absolute baby two nights in a row. That's, uh, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love my primitive camp, I love my hammock, I love being able to just stretch it between two trees just about anywhere and just make a camp for the night. But I will say, the casa, <laughs> that's the good life. Sat last night, listened to some good music, had a couple beers in the patio, no mosquitoes, I watched the fire burn. It was absolutely wonderful. I did slip out last night and do a little bit more fishing, but um, just for a few minutes, and you know, the sun was dropping quick, the bugs were coming out, and the fish just weren't biting. So I didn't film it, didn't last long, came back, and just relaxed. This morning I got some eggs and potatoes on the grill. I'm gonna cook up a little bit of that fish from yesterday. I filleted that that one out into two small fillets, so I will uh, I'll, co I'll cook that one up, and uh, that'll be my breakfast: eggs, potatoes, fresh caught fish. Hua, life is good. Today is uh, all about going home. Now um, I may stop and fish. Just for a little bit this morning before it gets too hot, I'll see. Um, see how long it takes me to tear down. I need to get the truck unloaded. It's so dusty out here. The back of the truck is full and uh, full of dust. And so I want to get that kind of unloaded and cleaned up a little bit before I load everything back in. And uh, then I've got to tear down that tent, which actually is very easy to do. But I want to dry it out first a little bit. It didn't rain last night, but there's heavy dew on the cover, so I'd like to dry that out just a hair. So I'll pull everything out from the inside. Taking that tent down quick and easy, um, and it's relatively easy to get back in the bag. It's got an oversized bag, so it fits in pretty pretty nicely. The one thing nice about that tent is it's set up on the ice fishing uh, ice fish house, the pop up technology. So that thing is up in about 90 seconds. Now the whole setup, the you know inflating the queen bed, making it, stringing up the fairy lights, putting the rugs in and the chairs. I mean the whole setup process is probably an hour, hour and twenty minutes. Um, you know, at at not a fast pace. That's at a ninety degree temp pace. So you know, taking the kind of taking it kind of slow, but it doesn't take long. It's actually super super easy. That's one of the reasons I got that tent. Again, just pop the sides out. Boom, it's up and uh, pop it back in boom it's down so um, when i'm not feeling adventurous when i just want to relax which is what this weekend was all about this was just about getting in the woods getting some fresh forage food putting my feet up listening to the birds and just um, just really enjoying nature and and really good sleep which again two nights have just slept like a baby uh, waking up with the sun, the sunrise and the birds singing, that's what this was really about. 
I'll get back in that hammock here again soon, but um, uh, this set also is designed as a rental. Um, it's designed so that uh, someone who wants to camp, but you know, frankly, doesn't want to do all the work of camping, all come out, set everything up, and basically they just show up. So I mean the the. The tent's up, there's firewood in the fire pit, there's a camp stove, there's lights, um, there's pretty much everything you need. There's a cooler with ice in it. The only thing you need is whatever you're going to eat and whatever you're going to drink. Um, so that's kind of what that's designed to do. So I also wanted to test it out. I'm still working on, you know, a few details of, um, you know, cooking stuff and, you know, how long does it take me to take it, to, to put it up, how long does it take to take it down. So I'm still trying to narrow all that in. And... Uh, so that I can get that on the market. So it's it's designed again as a kind of an income stream. We'll see if I do that. <laughs> I, I bought it with the idea I either have really good camping equipment or I've got a secondary income stream. So I've got to get this fish on the griddle. So relax, enjoy the morning. I'll see you in a bit. Eggs, potatoes, spinach, homemade seasoning, fresh caught fish. Nice way to start the day. And I tell you what, it's important to eat well when you camp, don't you think? You gotta keep your energy up, right? Now today's meal is not foraged, really just the fish is. I prepped the uh, eggs and potatoes before I came out, so I just had a little plastic container, mixed the eggs up in it, added some potatoes, no seasonings or anything. The seasoning is my homemade seasoning, so it's foraged herbs like uh, peppergrass, uh, and it's grown herbs like uh, moringa root and basil. It's just a combination of a few different things. There's some seaweed in there that we harvested from the Gulf. There's some sea salt that we harvested from the Gulf. And so, so that part is foraged or grown. And then of course the fish is fresh from yesterday. So, so part of it is, and you know, that's one of the things I don't really worry about. Certainly I have done videos where, you know, pretty much all I eat, well, all I eat is, is the forage stuff. Uh, but most of the time, something is incorporated. I like having a, a pasta or a lentil or rice or something as a base and then I'll add forage greens in. Um, you know, and this morning we're adding some forage stuff to just our, our regular breakfast so I incorporate it in. It's fun to do that. It's fun to go out and harvest it. It's fun to process it and, and cook it. Um, but I like to eat well. So, you know, I'm probably not going to find any wild potatoes out here and I like potatoes for breakfast. So, we brought them. Probably not going to get any eggs out of there. Or, you know, I'm in a national forest. If I did, I'd probably get arrested. So, you know, incorporate what you forage into your normal meals. And um, eat well. I think it's just part of the enjoyment of camping. There's just something really awesome about a well-cooked meal uh, on the campfire, especially. Now, this obviously isn't, but just cooked outdoors. You're either an outdoor person or you're not, you know, and, and I discovered a long time ago I was. I slept so good the last two nights. I wake up in the morning, I feel good. I don't, my body doesn't hurt, you know, uh, as it sometimes does in a regular bed. Um, the sinuses are clearer than they are. Now, there's no allergies or anything going on right now, but, um, well, I guess that's not true. It's spring, there probably is, but it's not bothering me. You know, there are, of course, things you got to deal with. You got to deal with wet ground muddiness things getting dirty quick uh, the bugs of course but everything has a trade-off and and I have determined that uh, some people it's not worth it they don't like the outdoors they'd rather be in their house in their nice comfy bed and and not have to deal with any bugs and when they do call the exterminator um, me I find a lot of peace out here I love listening to the animals and the birds yesterday I saw baby deer you know I mean like 
really recently born baby deer just tiny little things uh, we caught some nice fish yesterday so for me that is so worth the trade-off now I'll have a lot of work to do when I get home I'm not gonna do the dishes out here like I normally would do um, I uh, as many of you know uh, I have a reg regular job so although I'm off today I do have a meeting with a client this afternoon uh, so I'll go home clean up and uh, go to that and then I'll uh, I'll do these dishes at home so we'll pack everything up and, and just not worry about it but normally I would do the dishes out here in the woods I bring a camp soap and, and all the equipment I need for it I guess my point to that soapbox is uh, you know if you're an outdoor person you know don't worry about as much as what you bring you know whether you're in a hammock or in a giant tent whether you're cooking on a camp stove or you're cooking on the open fire, whether you're bringing in all your food pre-made, making it out here, or foraging it, man, just get out in the woods. Uh, I, it took everything I had to convince myself to come out here this weekend. Um, I was doing the normal sit on the couch, looking around, well, I got some laundry to do, should clean up the house, uh, you know, oh, it's hot, I'm tired, uh, I could hang out and you know, watch TV, watch movies, listen to music, play video games, I mean, whatever, you know, I, I was going through all this stuff in my head, and I finally just got up and said, I'm going to do my, go for a drive, so I threw everything in the truck, I'm going to go for a drive, if I find the right spot, I'll camp, I got out here, this place was empty, nobody was here, and I found this perfect campsite, I've got shade, I've got, it's huge, I've got tons of space, and I said, okay, that's, that's it, I'm, I'm camping, yeah, and I thought, well, you know, I'll do one night and, you know, worst case scenario, I decide not to do the second night. And uh, so I did one night and, of course, now I'm having fun and I don't want to leave. So the point is, again, just get out and enjoy the outdoors because um, there are some beautiful state parks, state forests, wildlife preserves. Um, there, there's just so many opportunities to do it. And... Why not get out and enjoy it and learn something new? And by the way, I tried making that little fish rack yesterday. Remember, I'm not a big bushcrafter. I do some bushcrafting stuff and I did actually get it and it would have worked. Um, the only thing with it is I didn't build it really well for that fire pit. I should have made it taller, but I was using some dead trees that I found because I'm in a nat uh, national preserve. So I'm not going to cut anything green down. If I had green poles that would have been a whole different uh, whole different story because then I could have built it the height I needed um, and so I did, and so then I thought well I'll, I'll modify it to, to fit that cooking rack and then by that time it you know it's 6 30 I'm like you know what I'm just gonna cook dinner um, and so my point to that is don't worry about if something fails you know just get out and try something new and have fun with it don't worry if it doesn't work you know I end up having a great dinner last night of uh, you know fresh fish on the open fire and uh, yeah, I'm telling you what man no complaints even though my original idea didn't pan out and now this morning fresh fish potatoes giddy up fresh coffee Fresh attitude. I'm going to get to eating, guys. I'll see you before I head out.
Well, that's it, guys. Camp is completely tore down. Everything's cleaned up, put away, trucks loaded, and that ends a nice weekend. I, uh, I did go out for just a little bit this morning, cast it a few times, but as I started thinking about the time frame and getting back, I've got a pretty good drive back to the house. I decided to, uh, to call it, and I wanted to get everything dried out because even though it didn't rain, you get a lot of dew. And so you want to make sure you get like your tent cover and the tent bottom out into the sun. Let that dry off as much as you can before you pack it up in bags. When I get home, I'll still take it out and pull everything out and let it dry out even more. But uh, I got it probably 90, 80 to 90 percent of the way, uh, you know, before I left. So that works out pretty good. So I set all my tent stuff aside, you know, spread that out out in the sun, let it dry out as best I can, work on the kitchen stuff. And when all that's done, go back to the tent. And that works out pretty well. So I'm loaded up, heading out. It's been a great weekend. I got some fishing in, some foraging in. Got a lot of relaxation in. Some time around the campfire. Pretty much everything I, that I asked for for the weekend. But I've got a meeting with a client this afternoon, so time to head back. Thanks for tuning in for this video, and uh, I'm glad you came along. Hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, uh, hopefully the next time you see me, I'm out doing something wild.